live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Fifth year of coverage of our own event, Big Data NYC, where we cover all the action in, in New York City for this week in Big Data, in conjunction with Strata Data, which was originally Stra Big Hadoop World in 2010. Mm -hmm. We've been covering it for eight years. It became Strata Conference, <coughs> Strata Hadoop, now called Strata Data, probably called Strata AI tomorrow. Uh, who knows, but certainly the trends are going in that direction. I'm John Furrier, your co-host. Our next guest here in New York City is Sergey Rabatai, who's the head of business development at InData Labs from Belarus in town, doing some biz dev in the big data ecosystem. Welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, good morning. Uh, great, great to have you. So, <laughs> obviously, um, Belarus is becoming known as the Silicon Valley of Eastern Europe. A lot of great talent. You're seeing that really kind of explode. And a lot of great stuff going on globally, uh -huh. even though there's a lot of stuff that, you know, GDPR and all these other things happening. Um, it's clearly a global economy. With, uh, with tech. You know, Silicon Valley still is magical, I live there in Palo Alto, but you're starting to see peering points within these ecosystems of entrepreneurship, and now big companies are taking advantage of it as well. Mm -hmm. What do you guys do? I mean, you're in the middle of that. Yeah. What does InData <laughs> Labs do in context of uh, all this? Well, um, InData Labs uh, is a full stack uh, data science company, uh, which means that uh, we provide professional services for uh, data strategy, uh, big data engineering and uh, the data science. Uh, so um, yeah, like you just said, you know, we are we are based. My team is based in Minsk, Belarus. Uh, we're about 40 people strong at the moment, and um, uh, in the uh, you know recent years we have been very successful s uh, starting this uh, business, and uh, we have been getting customers from uh, all over the world, including uh, United States, uh, Great Britain. Uh, and uh, European Union. Uh, the company was launched uh, about um, four years ago, uh, and um, uh, a very important thing that uh, it was launched by two tech leaders uh, who come from uh, very uh, data-driven industries. Uh, our CEO, Ilya Kirillov, uh, has been uh, running uh, several ad tech companies for many years. And um, our second founder, uh, Marat Karpeko, uh, has been holding uh, C-level positions in one of the most successful uh, gaming companies in the world. Uh, so, so they know data. Uh, they're data so guys. Yeah, they're data guys. Uh, they, uh, they know data from different aspects, <laughs> uh, and that brings synergy to our business. And you guys bring that expertise now in a professional services framework. So give me an example of some of the things that someone might want to call you up on because the thing we're hearing here in New mm -hmm. York City this week is, look, we need more data scientists and they got to be more productive. They're spending way too much time mm -hmm. wrangling and doing stuff that mm -hmm. they shouldn't be doing. I mean, in the old days, sysadmins were built to let people be productive and they, they ran the infrastructure. That's not what data scientists should be doing. They're the users. So yep. there's, a, there's, there's a level of setting things up and then there's a level of provisioning essentially data assets, but then the data scientists just want to do their job. Yep. How do you help companies do uh, that? Well, I would probably, uh, you know, if, if I take all of our activities, I would split them like into two big parts. Uh, so, uh, uh, first of all, you know, we, we are helping uh, big companies to, uh, who already have a lot of data, uh, we help them in uh, managing this data more effectively. So uh, we help them with uh, uh, predictive mm -hmm. analytics. Uh, we help them with um, uh, helping them building the uh, churn prediction and uh, user segmentation solutions. Uh, we have been uh, recently involved into several natural language processing um, uh, projects. Uh, and uh, you know, one of our successful key studies, we helped one of the uh, largest gaming companies to um, automate uh, their uh, customer feedback uh, processing. So um, like a couple of years ago, they were working manually with their customer feedback uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we built them a tool mm -hmm. that allows them to instantly get the uh, sentiment of what the user say. So it's like a kind of a voice of a customer, uh, which means they can be more effective in uh, developing new things for their games. Um, so uh, we, uh, you know. So when was someone engaged? Just to, I'm just trying to peg an uh, order of magnitude of mm -hmm. um, the levels of engagements you do. Um, startups come in, is it big companies? What kind of size, scoped work do you do? 
so I would say that uh, at the moment uh, we work with startups, but it's a bit of a different approach than uh, we have with like big or well-established companies. Uh, for uh, you know, when startups or startups typically approach us uh, with asking to help them to implement some uh, brand new technologies like uh, neural networks or um, uh, deep learning, so they want to be uh, effective from the start. They want to use the um, you know the cutting edge technology uh, to be more attractive, to provide uh, you know to have like a better value on the market, and uh, you know just to be effective and to be. Uh, a successful business from the start. Uh, the other part uh, are the well-established companies who already have got the data, but they understand that uh, so far their data might not be uh, used that effectively as it should have been used. Uh, and therefore, um, they approach us with um, a request to help them to uh, get more insights out of the data, let's say implement some machine learning uh, that uh, can help them uh, How about larger companies? What kind of s projects do you work for them? Uh, it could be, um, you know, typical project is like churn prediction. Yeah, that is very actual for the companies who have got a lot of uh, customer data. Um, uh, then it could be um, uh, companies from such industries like betting industry, uh, where churn is very, you know, is a very big issue. Uh, and, uh, well, the same probably applies to companies who do, you know, trading. Yeah. So a scale like is one of the different th things that you differentiate around. I mean, it sounds like mm -hmm. your founder's got some ad tech background, obviously, mm -hmm. must be a larger, yeah. large data set. Is your profile of engagements large scale? Mm -hmm. Is it, I'm just trying to get a handle of if someone's watching, you know, okay. who, sh who, who what, what's the kind of engagements sh people should be calling you for? Give us an example of that. Uh, like, let's say there is a company who, uh, has got a lot of customer data, has got some products, and they have a problem of churn, or they have a problems uh, of segmenting their customers yeah. so they can later address the specific segments of the customers with the right offers mm -hmm. at the right time yeah. and through yeah. the right marketing channel. Um, uh, then uh, it could be um, uh, customers or requests uh, where uh, natural uh, text processing is required, where we have to you know, automate some understanding of the written or spoken text. Uh, then I should say that uh, we have been getting um, recently some requests uh, where uh, computer vision skills are required. Because uh, I think, you know, the, the, first, uh, the first stage of uh, AI being really intelligent was the, um, was the speech recognition. And I think mm. nowadays we managed to uh, reach to the level of what we uh, earlier saw in the fantastic movies or sci-fi movies. Okay. Uh, so uh, computer vision is going to be like the next leap in uh, all that AI buzz we're having yeah. at the moment. So you solve, the problem that you solve for customers is data problems. If yeah. they're swimming in a lot of data, you yeah. can help them. If they want to actually make that data do things that are cutting edge, you guys can help them. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. Cool. So here's the question for you. Um, I mean, Belarus has obviously got good, mm -hmm. good things going on per the press that you've been getting, yeah. uh, the whole area, and, and you guys in particular. Mm -hmm. So I'm a buyer. One question I might ask is, Hey, Sergey, how do I know you can be able to keep that talent? This churn is always a big problem. I've, I've, I've dealt okay. with outsourcing before, and in the U.S., <laughs> it's hard to keep talent. But I've heard there's a churn. Mm -hmm. How do you guys keep the talent in the in the in the country? How do you keep talent in the projects? Is there certain economic rules over there? Mm -hmm. What's happening in Belarus? Give us give us the economic. Yeah. Overview. So uh, basically, what you're saying, yeah, churn uh, churn problem uh, has always been known for um, uh, companies who have their development teams in in Asian region. Uh, that's a known problem because um, I have a lot of meetings with um, you know, clients in the U.K. and the U.S. and uh, and potential prospects, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so they say it, it is a problem for them. Uh, with Belarus, uh, I don't think we uh, have that because, uh, uh, from what I know, we have an average churn of under 10 percent. Uh, that's that's the figures uh, across the industry. Uh, in smaller companies, the the churn is even less, uh, and there are specific reasons for that. Uh, first of all. Um, that uh, due to Belarusians' mentality, yeah, we always try to keep to a job that we're having, yeah. So we we do not just a cultural do, thing. That's just the cultural thing. Yeah. We do not change. We do not. You tend have honor. To be job you have hoppers. an honor code, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
so that's one of the things. Uh, another thing is that uh, the Belarusian IT industry is very small. So we have, um, I would say, no more than 40,000 people uh, being involved into different, you know, IT companies. And the community is very small. So if somebody is hopping jobs uh, from one job to another, it's going to be known and this person is not likely to have like a good career. Um, so job hoppers is kind of like a... Uh, a code of community honor of like, Silicon Valley works that way too, by the yeah. way. You know, you, you get identified, that's, your, that's who you are. You yeah, and uh, uh, so nowadays... Uh, Economic tax breaks going on over there, what's the government to get involved? Uh, so uh, one of the key things is that the uh, special tax and uh, legal uh, regulations that uh, Belarus has got uh, at the moment. I can definitely say that there's no country in the world uh, that has got the same tax preferences and the uh, same support from the, um, uh, from the government. Like uh, if a Belarusian company, IT company, uh, is, uh, becomes a part of Belarusian high-tech park, it means the company becomes automatically exempt from VAT tax, uh, corporate income tax, uh, the employees of that company uh, having the reliefs on their income, uh, personal income tax rate, uh, and there are, you know, there are a lot more reliefs that um, uh, make the uh, talent stay in the country. Uh, having this relief uh, for the IT business allows the companies to provide better working conditions for the uh, for the uh, employees and stop the uh, people uh, from migrating to other parts of the world. Uh, so that's what we have. So they create an environment where there's not a lot of migration out of the, out of the area. They keep uh, the, and the tech community kind of does its own policing of you know, behavior for innovation. Uh, yeah, but I think that before those ish initiatives were adopted, there, wa there was a certain percentage of people migrating. But yeah. I think that nowadays it even if it happens, yes, you're right, it's, it's not that substantial. Great, so tell us, uh, great, great overview in the company, and congratulations, it's a good opportunity for folks watching, it's good to explore new, new uh, areas of talent, especially ones that have uh, the work ethic and knowledge you guys mm -hmm. have over there. New York here, this code's here too, is get, get the job done, <laughs> <laughs> be on time. Um, what's your experience like in New York here? What's your, what's your, what's your goal this week? Um, what's some of the meetings you're having? Share with the folks mm -hmm. kind of the, your game plan for Big Data NYC? Well, uh, yeah, I really enjoy my stay here. It's, uh, so far it has been a very enjoyable experience. Uh, from the business perspective, you know, I had uh, over 10 meetings uh, with, the, uh, with the prospective customers and uh, we are likely to have follow-ups coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I can definitely say that there is a great demand uh, for professional services. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, if you, if you go to Javits Center, you can see there's a lot of uh, jobs being posted on the uh, job boards. It means that uh, there is lack of knowledge here uh, in, uh, in the U.S., yeah? And one, one more important thing that I wanted to share with you that um, from my personal observations that uh, USA, UK, and maybe Nordic countries, they have very, very uh, strong background for creating the business ideas. But uh, uh, Eastern Europe uh, or Eastern European countries and Belarus in particular, they are very strong in actually implementing those uh, building ideas. Them. Yes, building them. Uh, I think you know we we have like lots of synergies, and you know we um, you know we we can we can Great. you know work together. Uh, so um, I also got some meetings with already with existing customers here in the U.S. And uh, you know so far we had you know good experience. Um, uh, I can see that, you know, New York is moving fast. Uh, I travel a lot. I've been yeah. to over 40 yeah. uh, countries in the uh, previous uh, five years. And uh, I just, uh, you know, it, New York is different. It New differs, it differs it <laughs> even differs from uh, yeah. many cities, other cities in the U.S. And, um, you know, <laughs> a lot of banks are here, a lot of business in New York. New York's a great town, love New York City. Well, it's one of my favorites, love coming here. Mm. Actually, I grew up right across the river in New Jersey, yeah. but great town. I see California, Palo Alto, yeah. it's a little bit more softer in terms of weather, uh -huh. but you know, they, they have a culture there too. It sounds like a lot like what's going on in Belarus, so congratulations. And, yeah. and if we get some business for you, should we give them the Cube discount? Tell them John sent you and you get 10% <laughs> off. All right. All right. What do you think? Yeah, sounds, All right. yeah. yeah, sounds great. Yeah, we can make it a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them John sent you, you get 10% off. No, I'm only kidding. services. Congratulations. Yeah. Final question. What's the number one thing people are buying for service? 
from you guys, number one thing. What's the most uh, requested uh, service you provide? Uh, the most requested service is, uh, uh, first of all, uh, Mm, many customers, they understand that they have got a lot of data, they, they want to do something with the data. But before you actually do some implementation, you have to do a lot of discovery or preparatory work. Uh, I would say no matter how we end up with the customer, uh, this stage is basically, I the, the idea of that stage is to identify the ways uh, data science uh, can be implemented and can provide benefits to the business. Yeah. That's the most important. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, like 95% of the customers, they approach us with this thing in the yeah. first place. And uh, based on the uh, results of that uh, preparatory stage, we can then advise the customers uh, what can they do or how they can actually benefit from the existing data or what other things they should collect in order to make uh, their business more effective. Sergey, thanks for coming on. Belarus got a lot Thank of builders you. there. Thanks Check them lot. out. Builders are critical in this new world. Obviously the cloud, a lot of great opportunities, a lot of builders in Belarus. This is theCUBE bringing you all the action from New York City, more after this short break. We'll be right back. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media and co-host of theCUBE. I've been in the tech 